My name is Lauren Ekstrom, and welcome to this 60-minute restorative yoga class from our new Interdimension TV 50-hour yin and restorative yoga training. For this practice, you'll need four yoga blocks, two bolsters, a nearby wall, and a blanket. If you enjoy this class, be sure to check out the link below and experience our new 50-hour training, which comes with a comprehensive manual and an online private group to support you in your journey. Thank you so much for your practice, and I look forward to seeing you at the end. Welcome to Elevate. As a reminder, for this practice, you'll need two bolsters, four yoga blocks, a blanket, and a nearby wall. We're gonna begin in a variation of the prostration pose. You'll take your four blocks at their lowest height and line them up along the center of your yoga mat. On top of two blocks, you'll place one bolster. And then on top of your second set of blocks, you'll place your second bolster. Bringing the body forward, place the right knee on the mat to the outside edge of your back bolster and your left knee to the outside of the mat outside the right side of the bolster. And then with the knees separated, walk the torso forward, lay the chest and the belly down onto the bolsters and then turn one cheek down. If you need to scoot the body back, feel free to scoot the body back and then extend the legs back so that the tops of the feet and the shins are completely at rest. Your palms can face down on the earth. You might cradle the bolsters or the blocks the same way that you would cradle a pillow in bed. And then once you've placed the body in a way that feels sustainable and supported to you, making any adjustments that you need to, you might allow the eyes to close or even cover the eyes with an eye pillow or an eye mask. And the question that we enter into this practice with is how much of your worth has been tied up in how much you get done? Another way of saying this is how much of our identity have we attached to our productivity? Now, unfortunately, in our culture, being stressed has become synonymous with being important. And by undertaking this practice, what you're really saying is, I'm not going to identify that way anymore. I know that my birthright is about coming from a state of rest and not a state of exhaustion. As Robert Frost so famously once wrote, how many things have to happen to you before something occurs to you? This practice is you taking a stand. It's a form of preventative medicine. It's a way of you asserting the importance of deep self-care through action and the subversive act of rest. You're not gonna wait until you get the diagnosis. You're not gonna wait until burnout overtakes you. You're showing up now because you understand the value is not just for you, but is for everyone that you interact with. So close the eyes and let yourself be elevated by the choice that you're making to do this practice, to take this time, and in no small way to take a stand for the way that you want to feel in this world and in your life. And with this, we begin.
see if the eyes can remain closed. And very gently lift your head and turn the opposite cheek down onto your stack of bolsters for balance in the sides of the neck. We're holding these postures for 10 minutes apiece. So the full support of the pose and your complete ease is key. Each time you enter into a pose or make an adjustment, take that gentle internal scan through the body and surrender any unnecessary holding or tension. just through the frame of awareness, there can be tiny shifts at the corners of the eyes, the hinge of the jaw, or even deep down in the pelvic floor and the hips. Keeping the body still and the eyes closed. Sending that gentle signal to the nervous system and the mind that a change is about to take place. Simply begin to deepen your breath. And being sure to not jar anything you've stepped into. Making the commitment as we transition to do so with the same energy of gentleness and non-urgency. Begin to press into the hands as you shift back onto your hands and knees. And as you shift back onto your hands and knees, move the bolsters off to the side and remove your blocks. And from there, we'll scoot the bolsters slightly forward and line them up in the same way, lengthwise along your mat. Take your strap and then come to seated on your bolsters. And as you come to seated on your bolsters, you'll take your strap 
swing your legs straight forward toward the top of your mat. And take your strap and place it over the tops of your thighs. So lift your heels. And as your strap comes to the middle of your thighs, we're gonna tighten the strap, making sure that the metal or plastic part of the strap is nowhere near your skin. And the strap is really just there to help keep your legs nice and snug together. The strap could be by the thighs or even around the middle of the shin, so you have two options in this shape. From this place, you want to scoot the body far enough forward so that when you recline back, your shoulder blades land at the base of the bolster. And as you recline back, if you notice like Mako here, her shoulders aren't on the floor, so she'll scoot a little bit back until the back of her heart and her upper back are at rest on the mat. And then from that place, as the shoulders roll down the back and the arms drop down by the sides, you're in a supported variation of shoulder stand. The heart slightly higher than the head. So with this theme of elevation, a little bit of a gentle energizing that begins to pulse through the body at the same time that you rest. And sense if there are any shifts or changes that need to take place so that you can be fully at ease. Of course, one of the things that makes human beings so unique is the evolution of a highly evolved prefrontal cortex. And it's this part of the brain that differentiates us from really all other beings. It's the place associated with thinking, planning, and philosophizing. The ability that our unique minds have to go not just into the past, but also projecting far forward into the future. But it's also that exact thing that can make a practice such as this, or even meditation, so incredibly challenging. The opportunity that you have right now is to tell your mind that it's okay to rest. You can anchor into the felt sense of your body connected to the ground and to the props. You can rest your attention on the rise and the fall of your breath moving into and out of your body. And then you know that you have time to move back into a state of connection. That we live our lives really in this cult of urgency. And right now, this is it. You're exactly where you need to be for the amount of time that you need to be here. And can you simply trust the process? And in trusting the process, there is a story that I love. There was a monk named Aja Sumedho. He studied with the great teacher Aja Cha of the Thai forest tradition. And at one point, Aja Cha and Aja Sumedho traveled to London together. And when they arrived, Aja Cha told Aja Sumedho, go on your alms rounds every single day. And Aja Sumedho was a little bit unsure. He said, you know, here we are in a city and they're not familiar with monks taking their bowls out and going on alms rounds. And his teacher told him, if you don't go, they'll never learn. 
And so every day he went out with his bowl and people would walk by and sometimes ignore him, sometimes ask what he was doing, sometimes drop candy or coins into his bowl. And he came back and told his teacher how it was going. And Aja Cha reminded him that Siddhartha would never have become the Buddha if he hadn't seen monks out on alms rounds. That it was the first time that Siddhartha had left the palace walls. And as he rode around in his charioteer, he was witness not just to death and old age, but also witness to the possibility of another path. And because he saw monks out on alms rounds, he left the palace and became the Buddha. So the next day, Aja Samedo went out once again, and a man came up to him and asked what he was doing. He explained that he came from the Thai forest tradition. And the man said, I have a forest. It's out in Sussex in a beautiful place. It would be perfect for a group of monks to live. And so by going out on alms rounds, he gained a forest where a monastery was built and he became the abbot. And so we trust the process of our practice without necessarily knowing what the benefits are going to be, what the gifts are going to be, or the outcome. But day in, day out, in all the different ways that our practice might look, we go out on our version of those alms rounds with deep intention and embodied presence. Bring your attention back to your body being breathed. Move your breath down into your belly and out into the sides of your body. And as your breath deepens, begin to rebend your knees. Let your knees come towards your chest, reach forward with your hands, loosen your strap. Slip your legs out from within your strap, place your strap off to the side. Bend your knees and place your feet flat onto the floor, maybe opening them wider than your bolster. 
and then pressing down into your feet, lift your hips up, slide your bolster out from underneath you off to the side and then lower the upper back, the middle back and the lower back all the way down onto the mat, letting the natural curves of the spine come back in, taking that moment. And spreading the arms away from the body, roll to the left side and then press your way up to sit. As you rise to sit, face the top of your mat, extend both legs straight forward. Place one bolster parallel with the top of your mat over your shins. You might have some blocks nearby or a blanket. Place your second bolster lengthwise across your legs and then fold forward. And you might want to block underneath the forehead, giving the forehead a place to rest. You can drop the arms down onto your lower bolster and find yourself in a supported forward fold, moving the block as high as you need it to move so that you can be in a state of receptivity rather than a state of striving. Remembering that once again, the core of a restorative yoga practice is not about getting the deepest stretch possible, but about receiving the deepest state of rest possible. And this really touches into that core piece of yoga philosophy. And it's really also tied into this misconception that our identity is somehow tied in with how much we get done, how productive we are. And in yoga, we would call that maya or illusion. A forward fold in this case is not about how flexible you are, not about how deep you get. So healing that disillusionment and coming into a state of willingly turning inward on yourself and from that place, acknowledgement. This is enough. I'm enough. I've always had and been enough. And in this supported place, you rest.
take a deep breath in and a full breath out. And slowly rolling one vertebrae at a time, rising all the way back up to a tall spine. Take a seat. Be there for a moment in that energy of pausing and integration. And just watching that part of you that gets caught in urgency. Maybe a little sense of lightness and humor as you acknowledge if it's present for you, that part of you that is so quick to get to the next thing. And just to know that by taking this pause, there's healing. And from there, shift your props off of your legs and off to the side. And then bringing one bolster with you, slide your mat to the nearest wall as we set up for legs up the wall. And once your mat is at the wall, place your bolster parallel with the head of your mat about six inches away from the wall. Come to seated at the center of your bolster, getting your right hip close to the wall. From there, start to swing your legs up the wall as you move your upper body toward the back of the mat, using your elbows and your arms for support. And just remember, like we'll say in the lectures, the entrance into this pose can take time to finesse. It's not always very graceful and that's okay. We just want to make sure that we feel supported as we enter. And then once you arrive, situate your arms in a way that feels supportive to you, which might be by the sides or cactus, deeply personal. Let the sitting bones hang slightly forward off the bolster. And with your legs up the wall, you might cover your eyes or close your eyes. And receive. And so with this intention of elevation, there are a few inversions that we're sequencing throughout this class today. The root word, restore, literally means to bring back to life. And so by bringing the heart higher than the head or elevating the legs above the heart. These are small ways of imbuing your physiology with gentle doses of energy to literally bring you back to life. And there's nothing that you have to do, nothing that you have to make happen. See if you can be here and allow.
Let your awareness drift back into your body. And see if you might invite this next breath to move down into the belly. Full body breath. And from here, re-bend your knees. Place the soles of your feet on the wall. Press into your feet to lift your hips. And then using your hands, slide your bolster out to one side. Lower your sacrum all the way down. Draw your knees into your chest. And then curl away from your bolster to the side where you have some space. Cradle your head. Take your time. And then pressing down into the hands, rise all the way back up to sit. And once you arrive into a seated position, you can either stay here, keeping your mat near the wall for the duration of practice, or move your mat back into the center of the space. And as you come back onto your mat, have one bolster on the right side of your mat. Come to seated. Place your other bolster on the left side of your mat and lie all the way down onto your back. Hug your right knee into your chest. And as your right knee comes into your chest, take your left hand outside of your right and roll onto your outer left hip and then place your outer right knee, outer right calf, and outer right foot on a bolster. Your left hand can stay outside of your right knee, and then you might open your right arm out to the right. It can rest on the floor, or if you like, you can place a bolster underneath your elbow or arm for support as you take a twist. If you have something to cover the eyes, eye mask or an eye pillow, know that you can always add that for support if it feels right. If restorative yoga is a new practice for you, we make this shift into the parasympathetic side of the nervous system. This is the aspect of the nervous system associated with regeneration, healing. And as you make that shift, there are a few things that you might notice slower heart rate and slower breathing. Some of this might result in very cool feeling limbs, cold toes and cold hands, which is why we often suggest cozy socks and layers. You might notice yourself yawning a lot great sign that we're in that ventral vagal state of the nervous system. People sometimes get embarrassed because the movement of digestion turns on when we're in that state. So you might hear your stomach 
gurgling, making all sorts of noise, just for you to know that these are all really beautiful signs of that shift taking place. On your next breath in, roll onto your back, hugging your right knee into your chest, followed by your left to give them both a squeeze. Keeping your left knee where it is, extend your right leg straight forward. Bring your right hand outside of your left knee. Adjust the bolsters as you need to. And as you cross the left knee over to the right, let the left knee, outer calf, and outer foot rest on the bolster for support. Bring your left arm to the left side, and then allow the whole outer arm to be supported if that feels right. If you have a lot of musculature in the shoulders, history of injury and tightness. Your job is not to force the left shoulder down to the floor, but instead to take this opportunity to call in support.
on the inhale. Roll on to the back, hug the left knee into the chest, followed by the right. Giving both knees a big squeeze. Depending on your bolsters, you might stack them on top of each other underneath your knees, or if they're quite thick, you might just use one. Hug the knees in, extend the legs forward, and drop the arms down by the sides, and shavasana as you rest.
you have the time today, please stay an extra five or even ten minutes. If it's all the time that you have, transition slowly, bending the knees, rolling to one side, rising to sit all in your own time. One of the great teachers, Stephen Cope, writes, It's not what you know, but how you live that counts. What did you learn today? What were the insights that came forward in your practice? And based off of that, how will you now live? Remembering that your value is not about what you produce. Your identity is not tied up in how much you get done. That right here in this moment, you are fully worthy, fully valued, and deserving of rest. That when you choose to rest, healing for you and it's also radical care for our community. Thank you so much for your practice. Namaste. Thank you so much in joining me for this practice. If you'd like to learn more about yin and restorative yoga, visit the link below to experience our brand new 50 hour yin and restorative training through Interdimension Academy. Be sure to click subscribe and I look forward to practicing with you again.